So up until now, we've dealt with general controls. The controls that need to be implemented before we start using the computer information set system. So it's ultimately like the setting up controls, the planning controls before we actually implement the system itself. Okay? And guys, those controls are there to address the risks from using IT. So they are there to try and make sure that the system is programmed and designed correctly so that when I do start to put through the data for a revenue transaction to be recorded in the financials, it will be recorded correctly. That will come off, discounts will come off where they're supposed to, and the revenue will fi find its way into revenue in the financials correctly. And payroll and purchases. So once we've set it up, we can now start to use the computer information system for its purpose. We can start to use it to perform the accounting function. Okay, do you agree that, guys, you can't put through data before you have those general controls in place? Because if you haven't set and programmed the system correctly. When you go and put in the data for the revenue transaction, it's not going to go where it's supposed to go. So you set it up first and when you know that it is working because you've tested it, you can now go and start to actually use it. So that is the point we are at now where they want to go and input the information, the data, the source documents if that's what they're going to use and then allow the system to process what's been input so that it ends up in the financials as the end product, the output. Okay, so what happens? The first point, a person needs to input into the computer information system the details of what they need to do. Is it a transaction that needs to be recorded? So then it's the details of that transaction or is it a change to a master file? Remember guys, your master files standing data. So just a quick little summary there. You will have a customer master file which is a list of all the customers that you can sell to. It will have their credit limits and their credit terms. You will have a supplier master file. All the authorized suppliers, again with limits for which we can purchase from them. You'll have an inventory master file with all the inventory that you have and a fixed assets master file. Guys, remember, because this is all standing data, it's not got the balances and the details of the transactions that are taking place on a regular. So I won't have your customer's balance or your supplier's balance or the quantity of inventory you have, or the carrying value of your fixed asset, because guys, those change as you depreciate. Those change as you sell inventory. That's not standing. Standing data is, it's fixed data. So here's my fixed list of customers that I can sell to and suppliers I can purchase from. Here's my fixed list of inventory that we actually supply. Okay, so you have these master files and as you saw in our cycles, they were very, very important because if you put, if you sell to a customer who's not on the master file, then you could result, it could result in bad debts. 
or if you purchase from a supplier who's not on the supplier master file, who is not authorized, could result in inferior quality of goods purchased. So those master files are authorized by senior members within the business, and so if you want to make a change to that master file, there have to be strict controls around it. And therefore, a change would then have to be input into the system for the change to appear on the system. So same with inputting the details of your revenue, your purchases, your payroll transaction. So the first stage of using this system is inputting whatever data that you need to go into the system into the system. And a person does that. The second stage now is the processing of that data. Processing in the form of a transaction, there will be a journal, the GL, and then the TB. Think about that cycle that we had drawn up above with the pictures. Or, if it is a master file amendment, it will just be amending the master file. Okay, there's no journal GL or TB for that. So the second step, once the data is input, is that it needs to go where it's got to go in the system. And that, guys, is done by the system. So the computer information system will create the journal, the GL, the TB, or the amendment in the master file. And then the third step is the output. Once again, what is the end result of that data going into the system. The master file has been updated or the financials have been updated with the revenue transaction, the payroll and so on. So end result could be your financials or the master file change. And once again, it's that computer information system that shoots out the end result. It's as a result of the processing. Okay, so guys, look at how this all works. The first step, a person inputs the data. There is a manual function. The second step, the computer does the work. And the third step, the computer does the work. But there is a result. There is proof of what the computer has done in the third set. So, if the computer has been programmed correctly, then what I input should match the output. But that only happens if it has been programmed correctly. So part of those general controls, those system development and implementation control as well as the changes, program changes control. So if it's been programmed correctly, then the processing will be done correctly. And then what I put in will go to where it's supposed to be and the output will show that. So I know that there was a revenue transaction that was input. When I look at my revenue in the financials, that total revenue reflects that one revenue transaction that was input. It has been recorded correctly in the financials. So guys, because I've got access to the input, what was input, the data that was input, we'll be able to see that because that's out of the system. And because we'll have access to the output, the details of what's in the financials, as auditors, we can test that those two match. And then by default, if they match, the system must be processing correctly. So 
we are never going to look at the processing in auditing CTA level, okay? Because we can't get into the computer information systems programming. We will be able to test the input and the output. And if I'm comfortable that those two match, then I'm happy it was programmed correctly. So we need to understand the controls that they should have at the input stage and the controls that they should have at the output stage so that we can decide whether those controls are going to address the risks of the misstatement of the transaction going in or a misstatement of the master file amendment going in. Which means before we think of the controls, we need to understand what are the risks of misstatement. And that brings me to this slide. It's the inherent risks, guys, because remember, the risks around the recording of the transaction are all around the controls because that's the information processing and the control activities around that. But the inherent risks are the risks that a transaction or a master file amendment face irrespective of the way it has been recorded. Those are the first type of risks because of the nature of the transaction or the nature of the information that's going in. They do not change by the way the transactional information is going to be recorded. They don't change because you've got a manual system or a computer information system. They are the risks by the nature of the transaction or the information. And so we need to first consider what they are so that we can go and see if they have the controls that will address that. The controls now in that information system, whether it be manual or computer by. So, what are the inherent risks? The inherent risks are that they record fictitious or duplicate transactions or fictitious or duplicate master file amendments. Or they don't record a master file amendment that should have been recorded or a transaction that should have been recorded. Or they record it incorrectly. So for a transaction, they record the amount incorrectly. It's not accurate. Or the date, so it could be recorded in the incorrect period. Or the account, so recorded in the incorrect account. Whereas with the master file amendment, it could be that the amount is wrong if there is a change in an amount, like a credit limit. Or the details are wrong. The customer or the supplier that they make the change to could be wrong. These are the inherent risks with putting information into any information system. And so there have to be controls whose objective is to address these risks. So in the computer information system, they need to have controls whose purpose, objective, is to ensure the occurrence of the transaction or the master file amendment or to ensure the completeness of the transaction or the master file amendment or to ensure the accuracy of the transaction or master file amendment to ensure the cutoff of the transaction or the master file amendment or the classification
the computer information system has to have those controls. But what else has to have those controls? Look back at the diagram. The computer information system is not the only function in the system. Something else plays a role. There is a person in the beginning who inputs the information. So, it is not simply the computer information system that has to have those controls. There need to be manual controls for the input of the information. So in a computer information system, you are going to have to have controls around the manual and the computer information system so that input matches output. And so we have just addressed this question, do these manual key controls disappear when there's a computer information system? Segregation of duties and authorization, isolation of responsibility, access controls, reconciliation and good source document design. No, they do not disappear because in the input there is a person and it's in the input that they have to go and make sure that the information that goes in is complete, is accurate, it did occur, it's recorded in the correct date and the correct account. So these controls all achieve or were designed to address the risks above, those inherent risks. So these controls are still going to be relevant for where a person is involved. But what do I also know? I know that it cannot just be these manual controls. Because at a later point, the computer information system does the work. And so now I need to say there are going to have to be additional controls. When we've got a computer information system, because of the computer itself. And ultimately, wanting to address all of those risks throughout the input, processing and output. That the information is not processed incorrectly, the amount is correct, the date is correct, the details are correct, all of the information that's supposed to be recorded is, and no fictitious information isn't. So now guys, let's go and look at the computer information system controls that will achieve these same purposes so that the transactions and the master file amendments are recorded correctly.